meat that stands upright all by itself meat that stands upright all by itself <laughs> i should really call him hello everyone my name is god i mean spicy and about a month ago i made a youtube video talking about the indian people that i grew up watching on tv I was expecting the video to get just about 50 views or so. The video is currently sitting at around 90,000 views. <laughs> to say that I am shocked is an understatement. People actually care about what I have to say? I mean, I'm flattered. No, but in all seriousness, thank you so much. That means the world to me. So I ended that video by asking you guys if you can come up with any more Indian characters that you grew up watching on TV or in movies, and boy, did you guys deliver. I thought to myself, well, goddamn, now I have to make another video. So that's what this video is gonna be. I'm going to be discussing the Indian characters from your childhood, specifically Indian characters from the 2000s or any time earlier than that. And I'm actually gonna be putting some effort into organizing this video this time. I'm gonna be making a tier list. So let me go ahead and walk you through the tiers right now. So starting with the top tier, I'm calling this one the Dunuk Dunuk Dun tier or the Triple T tier. The Triple T ranking is reserved for those who represent the best of the best of our culture, you know, up there with the likes of Dal Ermendi, and you can do no wrong in my eyes. The second tier is the Dal Makhani tier. You know, you're good, you're cute, you're fun, you're a great source of protein for vegetarians, but you're not Matar Paneer, you know, you're not Malai Kofta, you're not Navratan Korma, you know, you are good, but you're just shy of being great. That's the second tier. The third tier is Basmati rice. You can tell I'm a little bit hungry right now. There's nothing inherently wrong with Basmati rice. It's just, you're, you're plain, you're bland. I don't really feel either way about you. So all the basic Basmati bitches are gonna go in this tier. And the last tier, I am labeling it the Vivek Ramaswamy tier. If I put a character in this tier, that means I hate you and I hate everything you stand for. So let's go ahead and rank all the characters that I talked about in the previous video right now. Um, I know I should have done this in the first video, but again, I didn't think more than 50 people would watch it. So let's take care of that right now. And let me just say something real quick right now. If you disagree with anything I have to say, that's fine. I'm totally okay with that. We are entitled to our own opinions. If you enjoyed any of the TV shows or movies that I talk about, I love that for you. But these videos are about me giving my perspective. If I turn on the TV, me, an Indian woman, and the first thing I hear is, Oh my god, I got an 88% on my maths test! Click. I'm turning that shit off. I am not watching that. I don't care if this show won 10 Emmys, cured you of your depression, or taught your bedridden grandfather how to walk again. I am not giving that the time of day. Listen, listen, listen. You got it all wrong about Indian people. I mean, I know you're Indian and I'm not, but let me tell you something. If you take away the tired and overplayed stereotypes, the phony and exaggerated accents, the fact that this character has been weaponized to bully and belittle Indian people, and if you quit being such a sensitive little snowflake, you'll find that this is actually a pretty great character. Keep telling yourself that. Let's start off with a character that I had completely forgotten about until you guys reminded me of him, and that's Sanjay from Fairly Odd Parents. I watched this show a lot when I was a kid, which is why it surprised me so much that Sanjay had slipped my mind, but then I remembered he rarely gets the limelight in this show. Timmy Turner literally refers to Sanjay as a backup friend, along with Elmer. You know, the kid with the talking boil. Weird! I haven't seen Chester and AJ or my backup friends Sanjay and Elmer in hours. Are you friends with Timmy Turner? <laughs> and we kind of hang out together, but I've never been to his house. Close enough. <laughs> Me and a bunch of your other unwished wishes have captured your family, friends, and your backup friends. Now you can suffer the loneliness. Hi, Timmy. It's me, Sanjay. I suffered. Sanjay is a nerd. He's a social outcast. He's absolutely obsessed with Timmy Turner, even though Timmy wants absolutely nothing to do with him. I love Fairly Odd Parents, but it's been so long since I've seen the show, I completely forgot how they treated Sanjay. Mom, Dad, AJ, Chester, Elmer, uh... Sanjay? Right. Sanjay got the same treatment that pretty much every Indian character on the cartoons in that day got, which is that they were total losers. So I'm putting him in the Vivek tier. 
Sorry. Sorry, Butch Hartman, but not sorry. Raj from Camp Laszlo. I didn't think anybody would remember this TV show, but boy, I was dead wrong. Camp Laszlo was a cartoon on Cartoon Network about three animal campers. There's Laszlo the spider monkey, Clam the rhino, and... Raj the elephant. <laughs> it's a cheese wheel. Cheese wheel! Why would your parents send you a cheese wheel? Everyone knows that a cheese wheel, especially a cheese wheel from the Kapizal River region, is the funnest toy in all of India. Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> How does it do that, Raj? The Indian cheese wheel has many magical properties. It can sound like a whoopee cushion. Raj is voiced by the great, talented, illustrious voice actor Jeff Bennett. Jeff, I am a huge fan of your work, so I ask this with nothing but love in my heart. Jeff, have you ever met an Indian person before? I know it's a cartoon. I know it's not meant to be accurate or whatever, but this accent is so far removed from anything that even remotely resembles what an Indian person sounds like. I would describe this voice as a white person doing an impression of an Indian person who's doing an impression of a white person who's making fun of an Indian person. You failed to earn your not tying badge 17 times, and you most certainly will not get one today. Despite all my bitching, I kind of love it. I mean, I don't even know why. I, I know I'm like completely contradicting myself, but the it's so bad it's good, you know what I'm saying? And there's something kind of endearing about Raj's character design, like he's just so adorable and I love the way he like holds his trunk when he's scared, like there's something really really charming about it. And it's Jeff Bennett, like I don't know what to tell you. It would be blasphemy to put Raj in the Dunuk Dunuk Dun tier, so Raj is respectfully Dal Makani status. End of discussion. So many people were commenting, Oh my gosh, I cannot believe you did not talk about Sally Bollywood. Oh my gosh, who is that? Up until now, I have never heard of Sally Bollywood. I realize that's because it's an Australian cartoon. French Australian to be exact. Some of my favorite things come from Australia. Steve Irwin, ACDC, Cold Ones. It's safe to say that I hold Australian media in a very high regard, so Sally Bollywood has some really, really huge shoes to fill. Sally Bollywood is a TV show about an Indian crime-solving preteen whose father is also a private investigator. First impressions, I absolutely love the art style, I love the background music, it's really, really fun. And I love Sally Bollywood's character design, the purple hair, the purple outfit, the bindi, it's all such a vibe, it's really, really cute. The name Sally Bollywood. I like it. I think it's cute. If I had a pet tortoise or something, I would name it Sally Bollywood, you know? But I draw the line at her dad's name. Until your results improve, no more investigations. Understood? What? But I've just taken a case! That's my last word. Now run along, I've got work to do. Harry Bollywood, private investigator. Harry Bollywood. Why would you name him Harry when Huddy is right there? One thing I've noticed about Indians in Western media is that they always get westernized first names. Very few Indian people that I've met have westernized names in real life. I wonder if this is because writers think that giving Indian people an easier to pronounce name makes them more palatable to a bigger audience. It's either that, or Indian people get this extremely long, comically hard to pronounce last name. Like, there's no in-between. Is it really that difficult to name an Indian character? Is there a Prakash in deep doo-doo? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody we laughs. We got him! Also, I just want to say that the dad's accent absolutely cracks me up. It's literally just an Australian man with the touchiest touch of Indian. They came in the post this morning, and I am not happy. And it seems as though the majority of the voice actors in this show are not of Indian origin. Now, is there anything inherently wrong with that? No. But when you're talking about a TV show where the main character is Indian, and you know, you live in a world where there's 1.4 billion Indians, are you telling me you could not find one Indian person who could do the job good enough for you? All I am saying is it would be nicer to see my people get work in voice acting, okay? Is that too much to ask? 
I watched a few episodes and aside from a few inaccuracies such as Bollywood being a family last name and Mrs. Apu reading a newspaper in two different languages, I think the show does a really good job of showcasing Indian culture. I love the background art, I love the character design. Sally is apparently even an expert in Kalari Payath, which is a form of martial arts that originated in the Indian state of Kerala. Even I didn't know that before watching this show. <laughs> this cartoon put more effort into writing an Indian character than any cartoon I had growing up. The theme song alone puts Sally Bollywood in the triple T tier. The music absolutely slaps. Australia, you never let me down. Next, we have Haji Singh from Johnny Quest. Now, I've never seen Johnny Quest because it's a cartoon that was just ever so slightly before my time, but this person left an absolutely wonderful comment that kind of piqued my curiosity about the cartoon, so naturally I looked into it. Johnny Quest is the son of a scientist who goes on wacky adventures with his friend, adoptive brother, and sidekick, Haji Singh. Originally, Haji is a orphan from Calcutta that was adopted by Johnny Quest's father. I would just like to point out that Haji is an Arabic first name and Singh is a Punjabi last name, but we'll let that slide. I found you, Haji! Come on out! Okay, I come out. Darn it! I missed you again! You look, but you do not see. Try again. Ready? Ready. You're in this one! Wrong again. Hey, show me how you do that, Haji. You mean like this? Or maybe this. Right off the bat, I noticed that Haji is more than just a sidekick. He's an invaluable member of the team and he's treated as almost equal to Johnny Quest. Now, I know that doesn't sound so impressive, but when you consider the fact that this cartoon came out in the 60s and in comparison to modern day cartoons where Indians are referred to as backup friends, backup friends. That's pretty impressive. Although I will say Haji got the snake charmer treatment from what it seems like, in that he is literally a snake charmer. What with his bejeweled turban and his magical powers. Seen, seen, Salabin. Oh no, not the levitation trick again. Hey Haji, that's enough, let me down. If I had a dollar for every time I made one of my white friends levitate, Let's just say I wouldn't have to charm snakes on the street for money anymore. Really, really interesting stuff. Considering the fact that this could have been someone's very first impression of an Indian person on TV, I don't think it's that bad at all. Haji Singh, your triple T status, baby. The same person that told me about Johnny Quest also mentioned that Johnny Bravo has a movie where he goes to Bollywood. In the words of Johnny Bravo himself, I'm sickened but curious. I'm sickened but curious. I loved Johnny Bravo, so naturally I have to watch Johnny Bravo Goes to Bollywood. I went into this movie ready for it to be just like any other cartoon depicting Indian people, that it was just gonna be chock full of stereotypes and it was just gonna horribly and grossly misrepresent our culture, but it was so good? It was so good. It was, it was so good! <laughs> I cannot say enough good things about Johnny Bravo Goes to Bollywood. This movie is about Johnny Bravo, who is also voiced by Jeff Bennett, who is now a washed up has-been celebrity, who decides that he needs to rekindle his career by moving to India to become a Bollywood superstar. It's official! Hollywood is dead! Long live Bollywood! The Indian film industry is where it's at! Now, it is worth mentioning that Bollywood is not an actual place. Bollywood is a term for the Indian movie industry, specifically movies in the Hindi language. But Johnny Bravo does not know that because Johnny Bravo is canonically a dumbass. Bollywood, huh? Oh man, that's got Bravo written all over it. Cause you know, they both begin with the letter B. This movie is just so fun. It's so funny. It's so original and so well written. It's just an all around fantastic movie and I recommend all of you watch it. Oh, the Indians are gonna love me. So, one of the arguments that I hear very commonly when people are defending characters like Apu and Baljeet is that they are cartoon characters, so they are meant to have silly, goofy accents. But here's the thing. There is a difference between having a silly, goofy accent and being a straight-up racist caricature. And to me, that is caricature territory. There is a way to have Indian accents in your cartoon and make it fun and whimsical without it being a complete slap in the face to Indians across the world. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but Johnny Bravo Goes to Bollywood is a great example of that. This is your last chance, Detective Dekil! The DA is irritating my buttocks! 
अमित यू आर शर्ली द स्मार्ट इन द फैंस आ कमाल कर दिया यार सो गुड इट्स इट्स सो स्टूपिड so stupid to answer my question from earlier yes jeff bennett finally met some indian people isn't it wonderful what we can accomplish together jeff without a shadow of a doubt this movie is to nuft nuft and status okay argue with the wall i guess i'm just so obsessed with this movie because i've never seen indians depicted in a cartoon without us turned into a complete laughing stock like i i'm obsessed i'm obsessed Gara, are you really going to classify this movie as good representation for Indians when it is about a white guy moving to India to dethrone a famous Indian actor? And didn't you say you were going to talk about stuff from the 2000s? Didn't this movie come out in 2011? You know what? Mind your business. Okay, enough with the cartoons. Let's be adults now and talk about some real life Indians. Kelly Kapoor from The Office. Deal. In the last week. No achievement is greater. Then is on again, off again, girlfriend. Who am I? I'm Kelly Kapoor, the business bitch. Whatever I know about the TV show The Office is limited to memes and the absolute influx of office-themed knickknacks that have flooded Etsy. I've watched a ton of clips of Kelly Kapoor on The Office, and from what I can gather, she's kind of a ditzy bimbo type girl with a psychotic obsessive side. But you're not supposed to wear white to a wedding. I know, but there was an emergency. I look really good in white. Her character's funny. It's well written, but like I'm not really feeling strongly either way about her. You know, I don't love her. I don't hate her. She just doesn't really elicit emotion in me. She doesn't make me feel the same things that Johnny Bravo goes to Bollywood make me feel. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just the fact that the office isn't my sense of humor. Like I think by now you should have a pretty good grasp of the things that I find funny, and that's utterly stupid shit. So Kelly Kapoor is cute and all, but she's she's Basmati rice, you know? She is She's the most Basmati character I've ever seen. The irony is not lost on me that Kelly Kapoor would absolutely hate to be compared to Basmati rice. Bend it like Beckham. You know, this movie used to come on TV all the time, and I never watched it because I just assumed it was about soccer and I was like, "Ew, sports. Why would I want to watch that?" I didn't even know Indian people were in the movie until I was an adult. I watched the movie for the first time a few years ago and it's it's fantastic. It's a wonderful movie. A movie created by Indian people and starring Indian people rarely ever reaches an audience that isn't South Asian, but this movie managed to do that, which is pretty cool. By far my favorite scene from Bended Like Beckham has to be when Jess gets called a racial slur and her soccer coach tries to comfort her. Jess, I'm Irish. Of course I don't understand what that feels like. Amazing. Just amazing. The family in the movie is Punjabi Sikh, so it would be criminal to put this movie in any other tier except Dunuk Dunuk Dun. Kevin Napoor, aka Kevin G from Mean Girls. Sh -sh Shake it, not stirred. I'm Kevin Napoor. The G is silent when I sneak in your door. Make love to your woman on the bathroom floor. I don't play it like Shaggy. You'll know it was me, 'cause the next time you see her, she'll be like, Ah, oh, Kevin G. Thank you, Kevin. That's enough. He's cute. He's fun. He's adorable. He thinks he's the shit, but he isn't. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about his character, especially since he only got altogether 5 minutes of screen time in this movie. If you want to see more of the actor who plays Kevin G in the movie, you should definitely check out his YouTube channel because he makes super super cool DIY videos. He's an absolute delight. I'm going to put him in doll. Throw him in the doll. Like any other child of the Y2K era, my sister and I watched an obscene amount of TV. And let me tell you something. In our household, we did not mess around when it came to the Cheetah Girls. Cheetah Girls 1 masterpiece. Cheetah Girls 2, come on now. Cheetah Girls 1 World. My sister and I did not watch Cheetah Girls One World when it first came out for the main reason being that Raven wasn't in it and Raven Simone owns our entire life. And another reason this movie never really appealed to me is because just looking at the promo pictures and the clips, it just looks corny as hell. I'm sorry. I mean just the outfits and the and the the colors and the fact that it's called Cheetah Girls One World like it it's so cheesy. Imagine if this movie was called Cheetah Girls Go to Jamaica and they were wearing like Rastafarian t-shirts and they had like the weed socks and they all got cornrows in their hair like that 
is what this feels like to me. But anyway, several people mentioned this movie, so I kind of felt obligated to watch it. The movie is about the Cheetah Girls, who accept a deal to star in a Bollywood movie called... To star in a... A movie called... A movie called... Called... A movie called... <laughs> Namaste Bombay. What happened to your laptop? You are not messing with your computer so you can flirt with that tech support guy. We are not even five minutes into the movie and they've already used the words tech support. If I can take my hater hat off for a second, it's a fun movie, okay? The songs don't measure up to the caliber of the songs of the first two movies, like not even in the slightest, but it's fun. The costumes were a little too colorful for my taste. I feel like the directors were like, ooh, India, ooh, exotic, ooh, make everyone dress insane. But to be fair, it is 2008, and even the Cheetah Girls themselves look like escaped J.C. Penny mannequins. My favorite two outfits of the movie had to be Chanel's final audition dress, the one with the bejeweled jeans, and Aqua's absolutely gorgeous turquoise lehenga in the last scene. That's enough being nice. I'm putting my hater hat back on right now. Let's talk about the love interest in this movie, Vic. I'm the director. Well, I'm Vic. Well, actually, my parents say, uh, Hello, Vikram! <laughs> but I prefer Vic. <laughs> you know, I too like to do a terrible impression of my parents when introducing myself to new people. Vikram, or Vic, is introduced as the director of Namaste Bombay, and it is revealed that he has somewhat of a crush on Chanel. This is the first time I can think of where Disney is portraying an Indian man as the love interest, but take note of the little details here. Vic talks with an American accent, he's rather light-skinned, and he has colored eyes, and and, oh yeah, the actor that plays him is not even Indian. Do you see how this stuff brainwashes us in our childhood? Juxtaposing him with the other Indian characters that Disney Channel has shown us in the same era, it is almost as if Vic is the love interest because he is the polar opposite of these other Indian dudes. See, kids? Indian men can be attractive, so long as he's not Indian at all. The other two Indian men in the movie are literally no better. There's Rahim, who, despite being a massive movie star, has never felt the loving touch of a woman. Never even kissed a girl, ever. No, but I've seen you kiss in your movies. Yes, on camera, but never for real. And then there's Amar, who, despite being from royalty, still works in tech support for some reason. Wait, you don't sound like you live in India. See, I watch a lot of American television. How are you going to go to India to make a movie and stereotype people in their own homeland? Out of sheer respect for the Cheetah Girls dynasty. I am not putting Cheetah Girls in the Vivek tier. I'm putting this movie in the Basmati tier. But Vic, for your sins, you will be judged independently. I am sentencing you to the Vivek tier. Okay, that's all I have to say for today. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on Instagram for all of my daily deranged thoughts. Subscribe if you want to see more. Um, once I hit 5,000 subscribers, I think I'm going to do a reading hate comments video. Believe me, they're piling up. <laughs> all right, bye for now.